Hey everyone, welcome back to Cloud Sprint. I did pass FinOps certified exam long back and since then I have been trying to make this video. I'm going to break down exactly how you can do it too, faster and smarter. We'll talk about what the exam is, why it's worth doing, what to study and exam patterns. My personal prep strategy and a few mistakes to avoid on exam day. So if you are a cloud or DevOps engineer who's spending half your life debugging cloud bills, this certification is for you. Let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to pass this exam on. So stay tuned and get to know how I did it so you can follow and kill this exam yourself. Before that, let's understand the importance of FinOps. The FinOps Certified Practitioner or FOCP is all about mastering the art of cloud and financial operations. Basically learning how can you make smart data driven decisions around cloud costs. Today, every company is trying to optimize their cloud spending without slowing down innovation. That's where FinOps comes in. It kind of bridges the gap between engineering, finance, and operations. If you are a cloud engineer, SRE, platform engineer, or even a product manager, this certification helps you. Understand where your cloud costs are going, learn how to optimize and forecast them, speak the same language as finance team, and show that you're not just deploying infra, you understand the business impact behind it. For me, that was the biggest takeaway. It changed how I think about architectural decisions. It's not just about scaling, uh, it's about scaling efficiently, right? So, so FinOps certifications gives you these sort of capabilities. Let's understand FinOps certification, what it is all about. FinOps certification is, is uh, completely backed by Linux Foundation. And this certification is itself kind of uh, 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 an open book exam and it has pretty much values and this is a stage one of the FOCP. Let's talk about the exam pattern and structure because this is where most people start. The exam has around 50 multiple choice questions. You get around 60 minutes to finish it and your passing is roughly 75%. Okay, so you should target to hit that bar line for sure. You also get three attempts to do it. To pass the exam. So you it's an, since it's an open book, you can try again if you fail at the first call. Now I'll let's try to understand how to what's the preparation strategy should look like. I have kind of highlighted the preparation guide I followed, uh, but more or less I want to talk about the questions. The questions are scenario based, not too technical but practical. Things like which FinOps phase does this activity belong to? How should you how should your team handle cloud chargebacks? The exam is based on FinOps framework and the three life cycle phases, which is inform, optimize, and operate. You will soon. You'll also see questions on shared responsibilities between teams, KPIs and metrics, tagging, cost allocation, budgeting, forecasting, governance and culture adoption. So it's not a coding exam. It's more about understanding FinOps principles and applying them. What are the study materials? I, these are the study materials I follow. Here's my exact two week prep plan. Uh, step one was understanding the framework. That was my first thing I started off with. And that 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 you can start with FinOps Foundation website itself. We read the FinOps frameworks section. It kind of explains every principle and phases very clearly. I recommend uh, reading that at least twice. Step two is uh, again official training, which is here like introduction to FinOps. That's super important. Uh, and you can also go go ahead. These are focus principle. Step two, you could also kind of purchase the official training. But if you don't want to do it, uh, it's it's good enough uh, without even the course because you you get enough content around internet to prepare. And since you know it's an open book, you could kind of uh, even if you fail first time, you could learn from your mistakes and try that again. You get three attempts to do it. Uh, but if you want to be absolute sure, feel free to purchase their course and uh, uh, prep for it. If not, you can still, I mean, find great webinars, summaries online that covers the same content. One must have, like join the community. The Slack, Slack community is gold. You'll find practitioners sharing experiences, tools, and even uh, practice questions. Uh, and then I made kind of short notes, flashcards on key topics, things like what are unit economics, how does the allocation model works, uh, what cloud, how to do cloud bill analysis. You don't need to memorize everything, you just need to understand the concept behind each. And the last bit, I would say that taking some mock exams. In this case, I, I tried to take some mock exams on Udemy and that kind of really helped me while I was kind of going through the exam. Uh, this helps us to get used to the question format, time pressure. I personally practiced the sample questions uh, from Udemy and some of the GitHub forums also you get. So yeah, the, 
Yeah, so this will be your simple prep strategy. And once you are well versed, start practicing in your company. Explain these concepts clearly to someone that would give you confidence. Top resources would be your foundation, which I mentioned, your FinOps YouTube channel that explain all these concepts and the community community forums which FinOps org runs. So these three you will give you enough resources to go through the content. Okay, how about our exam day? That's super important. It's, it's super simple. Every exam, I think one my tip is that first always read every question twice. Some are worded to test your understanding, not your memory. Eliminate obvious or eliminate obvious wrong options. Usually two are distractors. One is correct and one is kind of correct. Choose the one best aligns with the FinOps framework principle. Don't apply your brain or some practical scenario you have faced. Simply follow the framework which is being given to us. Third is manage your time. Don't get stuck on one question. Forget it, flag it and move it. Fourth is trust the principles. If you're unsure, think what would a FinOps practitioner do in such situation. Inform, optimize or operate. That logic alone will help you get most questions right. And lastly, stay calm. It's not a tricky exam. It's more about applying logic and understanding how team collaborates on cloud. Common mistakes what people do. A lot of people mistakes what they do is kind of they memorize without understanding. They ignore the culture and collaboration aspect of FinOps and that's a very big part of the exam. They don't revise the six FinOps principles which from the foundation of most questions. So don't skip that part. It's easy marks if you just read it carefully. What are the what are the benefits? What are the career advancements you get if once you do this uh, a practitioner exam? It really adds credibility to your LinkedIn. It helps in DevOps and platform engineering roles and makes your resume stand out because it shows you understand both tech and finance. For me, it opened up new conversations, not just about infra cost, but business value. And trust me, recruiters love that combination. So that completes breakdown of how the FinOps uh, certification exam happened with me. If you found this useful, drop a comment, tell me uh, when you're planning the exam uh, and I'll, I'll reply to a study checklist I used. Don't forget to hit like, share this with your DevOps friends and subscribe to Cloud Sprint for more real world cloud and AI engineering insights. Thanks for watching and all the best for your FinOps journey. Thank you.